Hello and welcome to Snyder's Return, a tabletop roleplay podcast. My guest today has found new meaning, new purpose, as though awakening from a deep and restful sleep to be inspired by fantastical journeys. To whom, where or what their journey will lead them is something we can experience for ourselves as we scale new heights, head down to creepy riverbeds and go over and under the aisles in the stream. As I welcome back TTRPG game designer and Hatchlings Games creator, Rich Oxenham to the show. Rich, it's an honor to get you back on the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me back on. It's been a long time coming. It has. It, yeah, it has been a long time. And you've been incredibly busy. So just in case someone hasn't heard our, our previous interview or seen some of the amazing work you've been doing in the TTRPG space, uh, would you mind giving us a brief recap of, of yourself and, and Hatchling Games and, and everything like that, please? Yeah, so I finished university about... Uh, 11 or 12 years ago and um i started running a uh, teen ttrpg group uh, in my local community uh playing dungeon dragons 5e and things and then um at the same time i was working for a deaf charity in the uk and uh i woke up kind of one morning after playing about six months of sessions and i thought well, maybe i should make my own game <laughs> so i thought um what what would the combination of learning sign language and tabletop role-playing games look like and that's how kind of inspirals came about and then we kick-started that uh we wanted just a thousand pound and it made thirty thousand, so it gave mm-hmm. us plenty of money to make the product much more professional than we envisioned uh, we had our deaf consultants come on board and our own sign language material. And um, it's proved a really popular game uh, with families and in education. Uh, we've had a couple of PAX panels about the game. Um, mm. And then I'm just building upon that, really. Uh, released a campaign setting overalls um, last year. And, um, yeah, we've got lots of projects in the pipeline. Yeah, and uh, some projects we we get to see um, on your... Actually, before I tell people where we can find your stuff, Rich, where can we find yourself, Hatchling Games, and and everything that that you're associated with, please? We've got our website, so it's a a UK website. It's www.hatchlingsgames.co.uk. You can find out all about our games on there and our community work. Um, we've got loads of other channels like on social media, Patreon, Kofi, and um, yeah, we're expanding into a, another business we'll talk about later. Amazing. Yeah, looking forward to that. So uh, I was about to say, we, I, I was sort of reading up on your various games on your Discord server, uh, which there were over 600 members, uh, some uh, inspirational, inspirational in their own right and very supportive creators on there as well. Um, you're on Twitter, over 11,000 followers on there, which is fantastic. Really get some visibility on the games you've created and are continuing to create. Um, so fantastic there. So I will make sure there are links down to all the places we can find you uh, down in the description below this podcast. So please scroll down, follow those links, support Rich, support Hatchling Games and all the good things that are coming out uh, now, or out now and coming out soon and in the future. Yeah. Um, one of those things uh, at time of recording is is close to the end of its uh, Kickstarter campaign. So uh, if you're listening to this next week at time of recording, um, go and support it. Uh, But Rich, tell us about Dragon Dowser, please. Well, I kind of, um, I just, I was quite ignorant when I first started designing in the the industry because I thought like there's only one type of role-playing game. And my background's in creative writing. I've got a, a, a BA and MA in it. Uh, quite a high level education in, in writing and um i discovered the kind of uh the beauty of journaling games uh, i didn't know that they even existed mm. before uh so i strayed across them and i sort of did a lot of research and went through itch.io about all the journaling games that were out and, and it seemed there was like a, a wave of them really at the time and i discovered mm. the carter system by peach garden games and uh uses an amazing deck of cards system where you kind of uh it sort of encourages exploration so i just thought uh what about tying these themes of kind of rescuing and rearing dragons uh to these uh, a card spread where you go across it and each card you reveal has uh associated journaling prompts 
Mm. and uh, like resource management so if you draw a low card like a two or three you lose resources and it kind of has a dire scenario (laughs) if you draw like a queen or a king it's the opposite so uh you know you you sort of have interaction with like these royal dragons Mm. and uh beneficial scenarios that's kind of the idea you you got across the spread of cards trying to find a dragon egg which is represented by the aces so uh, so with the aces, aces in the hole, as as it were, because these uh, dragon aces could will be buried somewhere in the in the, the grid, as I understand the way the cards are laid out from the card yeah. system. Uh, and and where do you have to take these these eggs once you've sort of gone through this journey, through this journaling process, going through this this card system as you as you move through? Once you have found an egg, so where does your adventure start and and maybe not end, but pause between? forays as it were yeah so you, so you start in this, uh, one of two sanctuaries which are uh, on the outside of the grid basically and they're kind of like your your hub area and your safe zone where you collect resources and then you move across the spread in a kind of it can be either linear or it could be like random direction depending on how like, lucky you feel um and then once you found your egg you uh, collect the resources and you head back to either the same sanctuary started out or the other one the alternative one if it's closer and then you do one final journal entry, which is about um, describing how you rear the hatchling to adulthood and how it affects the kingdom in kind of turmoil oh, wow. where you start. So it's kind of like a wish fulfillment ending. Yeah. Um, but the whole purpose of the game is to encourage creative writing. Uh, and that's mm. kind of what where my background lies and what I'm passionate about. So... So all our games hopefully have some sort of educational benefit, even if it might be a little more subtle than others absolutely and uh i was just wondering uh, as we sort of move across the 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 carter grid uh, six by four cards i believe it is um and you sort of leave your sanctuary and you go through this journaling journey you mentioned there low numbers have an impact and high numbers uh, and the aces being the eggs themselves what if you were to draw say two of the same card as you were to move across uh, on this journey so each each suit it represents a different theme so this is what gives it every journey and every journaling kind of like process a completely unique uh, story basically a narrative so we've got like community for hearts uh, machines our spades we've got mysteries for diamonds and clubs are like conflict and strife mm. um and so if you if you reveal a two of clubs, it's going to be a very different scenario and journaling prompts than a two of a two of diamonds, and that's how how you get variety, uh, okay. despite both of them being dreadful cards. Like one of them, <laughs> uh, I think the two of hearts, is so dire that one of your sanctuaries is destroyed. Wow! <laughs> so you don't have like you you lose fifty percent of your home base essentially. Um, but yeah, that's about as extreme as it gets. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I I imagine having such an event, and, and I, I I guess it's important to have such an event to, to sort of really stir up the senses and the emotions as, as you know, people invest uh, good time, thought, energy, and and imagination into creating this 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 journal through this game. Um, to have something like that to to put the world on its head almost as it were yeah. um is is amazing um but we're gonna have we're gonna have like a, i'm thinking of planning a like an itch to io jam oh, about yeah. with dowsings i think that'd be awesome if people mm. posted their like journeys just up on the, on this jam that'd be so cool so you've got all these little little short stories essentially mm. yeah no that, that that would be an interesting read to see how how people have sort of one how they use their own language to to sort of journal it and and even if people get similar cards how they respond um through their stories so i'm sure that'd be an, an a fun and interesting read to sort of scan through if, if that that does come to pass and I, and I really hope it does yeah um so i mentioned at the start this is currently under sort of kickstarter and, and things like that so if someone has been inspired and and just going to the kickstarter page i imagine there will be a great deal of people who will be uh inspired by this uh solo journaling rpg what can they expect to find and, and what what's the sort of the return as it were for the supporting this amazing project uh, project it's, it's really it's really good value for money and we feel we feel like um you know for i think it's like 30 pound you get the the soft cover rule book and a complete custom deck of cards and for a little bit more, you get a, a custom-made dice, handmade dice by a 
Ring Fable, uh, mm. beautiful kind of like represent a dowsing crystal. Uh, and that's used for, that's got dual purpose. So it's used as your player token, but also as a dice for some of the tests. So the seven and of eight of, of any card is a D6 roll. It's like a chaos roll. Oh, um, wow. So we like we like to integrate stuff that's not wasted, if that makes sense. It's not mm. just like a, aesthetics. It's like more, more to do with the system. Yeah, no, I, I love the, the the dice card sort of variables that, that you've added in. So not only do you have a deck of cards to worry about, you now have the the uh, the will of the dice gods uh, potentially trying to pull you in certain directions as well. Uh, I mean, currently just just have, sort of having a quick check of it here. Um, it's you know over four hundred backers. It's it's you know several times overfunded uh, already. Yeah. So definitely a, a great thing to to get in and get involved with. Um, th- we're doing this interview in June. So when when are you hoping to have the the game sort of released to to backers and and all those sorts of good things? Like very beginning of August. It's going to be very quick. It's it's finished basically. All mm. the cards are done, all the games done. The dice are manufactured already. So it's just a matter of um, getting the uh, prints done and then uh, distributing it. Um, we've just signed with a quite a big distributor in the US, so it's going to make the process a lot quicker, which is brilliant. No, that is brilliant. And, um, you know, full credit to you because this has been sort of highlighted on the, the Dice Breaker YouTube channel as part of, of the sort of the solo RPGs of 2023. So if you're listening to this, further down the line in the future then in the year of 2023 this is definitely one of the solo uh journey rpgs to uh ttrpgs sorry to to pick up um what, what's it been like getting exposure like that to this uh this project in particular uh obviously you had a large amount of exposure with respect to inspire uh, inspire Isles. um dragon dows are now being sort of picked up and highlighted on dice breaker for example yeah, it's really, it's really, it's really great. I think it's just you start to form um, connections with these media outlets and people that really want to support you. Um, I know that Matt at Dicebreaker, I, I approached him many years ago about Inspirals, and uh, you know he's got a personal connection to what the game does. Um, and if you get that initial sort of like uh, rapport with people, then they're mm. willing to support your whole career. I think, and that's wonderful because. Um, you know, it it does do a lot to boost your kind of presence and your kind of like uh, your impact with backers. Definitely, mm. it's just nice yeah. to put something like that on on the Kickstarter as well. Yeah, yeah. Anything like that, you know, like a project they love from Kickstarter. Any any sort of little bonus helps with with funding and with that audience connection. Absolutely, and uh, also in that video, you, you know, you, you put alongside some very strong games. Strider mode for uh, the One Ring. There's Wreck This Deck uh, uh, from Black Armada Games. There's uh, Star Swarm and uh, a few other fantastic sort of uh, well-produced games and, and to have yours sat alongside it. And it's actually one of the first, in the, I, I double-checked, it's in like the first 10 minutes. So it, it's it's clearly, you know, caught their attention and uh, put there to sort of capture uh, fresh eyeballs, as it were, as you go into that okay. video. So uh yeah, There's just some amazing fantastic. games on there. There's some amazing mm. games on there. Um, and yours is is rightly there as well. Thank you. Um, so what was it about the Carter system that, that you decided to use for, for this game in particular? I'm really drawn. Uh, it's, it's a brilliant system in its own right, but I'm really drawn to um, things that are kind of streamlined. Anything that's streamlined, I'm like very, very attracted to. Like uh, Not just rules light, but almost like hyper accessible. Mm. Um, so like things like with, with, with the process behind the Isles game, so Inspirals and Overalls, I've tried to, uh, cut it down, cut it down, cut it down, cut it down all the way from like the, the, the beginnings of making it 5e compatible, <laughs> which was obviously not, a, not an option in the end, mm. but, um, so design your own system, but having it and also the writing and everything and, and, and the way it's laid out all about accessibility, all about making it accessible to young people, especially, um, was the c- kind of idea, and and Carter, and and in fact, Dragon Dowser, the actual rule book, is also very well laid out and simple and accessible. Um, and the Carter system is very easy to use. That was the main reason. It's beautiful, like in terms of like streamlined system. 
and uh, the team behind this um, and and your other games as as Hatchlings games, but uh, but this one, what has it been like to work with the team, uh, sort of building this out from sort of the back to front uh, as we as um, enthusiasts and consumers uh, get to see the the fruits of your labour, as it were. It's been a brilliant process. That Dragon Dales in particular was really smooth. Um, we had quite a much smaller team than overalls. And I quite like that now in hindsight. I quite like narrowing the team down to uh, just a few people just because it, it, it gives you that sort of um, clarity of mm. aesthetics and the clarity of uh, kind of like design. And um, I think from now on, I'll try to uh, keep the team quite, quite uh, narrow in some ways. Um, just makes it easy to fulfill, makes it easier to, con- to keep control of. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's been a lovely process. Uh, we've had um, Ashley Willow's Quest being the the art lead on the project, and she kind of uh, reached out to people um, uh, and found these really amazing, diverse artists to do the card art uh, and and the eggs and the things things like this. It's been wonderful, and I found Emily to do the layout. And um, yeah, and just. I just I find I find that each project to project I, I carry over the same team members, which I really enjoy because it again it they kind of understand my uh, vision, you yeah. know, <clears throat> for each project. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so the the sort of the the rapport and, and the teamwork that that you you show and display as as a group um, continues into the future. I, you mentioned sort of the streamlined and and the rules light. Uh, different systems you've you have come across and learned of and had some experience with and and you're changing system again in the future for future releases so what has it been like sort of moving through these different systems and and what have you sort of picked out from each of them that you enjoy the most i think i think i do i think it's like anything it's like um you know it's like an artist uh dabbling with different styles and then uh finding ones they particularly enjoy and then making that kind, their kind of uh, their kind of identity in some ways. Mm. And I think it's the same with design. I think I've I'm, I'm still fairly new to it. I haven't designed a huge amount of varied games at this point, but um, I'm intending to like double down on kind of uh, exploration of these different systems. Uh, I think we're going to use Epoc- uh, we're going to use Powered by the Apocalypse uh, next, and then we've got another solo game. Uh, um, which is going to have an original system. And then with the further down line, we're going to use the Paragon system, mm. um, which is uh, not being used a lot and for other games. So it's exciting to like uh, try these new things out uh, and experiment a bit. And um, but they seem to, they seem to, I seem to build the theme upon the system, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I find a theme, I find a theme or, or like a kind of narrative of the game. And then I go right. What system is perfect for this? <laughs> if it's if it's Cryptid Creeks, which we'll maybe talk about in a minute, is kind mm. of um, about nostalgia and kind of like adventure and spookiness and things like this. And it seems to fit Power by the Couple Apocalypse with the playbooks and the moves very very well. Uh, and then Paragon is about Greek myths in space. Mm. So that's that's very tied to the kind of game from from those developers called uh, Aegon. Mm. which is like a sort of, sort of heroic greek myth game so yeah they seem to fit very well yeah absolutely i'm i'm a big fan of aegon and the paragon system um don't get to play it enough but that's a personal issue not a, a <laughs> uh anything else involved in that uh so we you know we've mentioned um new systems uh, or different systems and uh, we'll sort of move on to new projects shortly, but um, what have been some of your inspirations coming from uh, Inspirals into Dragon Dowser and and into your future projects? Where are you really sort of pulling your inspirations from? I think I think it's the sort of thing that kind of when when you look back, you can see a kind of like invisible thread through them all. So like obviously like Inspirals was. Um, inspired by the legend of zelda series video game series mm. kind of like especially aesthetically and especially some of the themes going on there um and then overalls again very zelda-ish very slot studio ghibli and then these are the two things that i i most um enjoy uh, was kind of zelda and studio ghibli films 
um, in my in my te- sort of teenage years or, or older, and then <clears throat> they impacted that. But then I, st- I I think you can see the thread kind of like thinking about like you got to rescue eggs and overalls, and I was thinking like maybe that would be good for the dragon game as well. So you've got to do the same thing in Dragon Dowser. They don't they don't seem like directly related, but this is the way mm. that I think it happens. And then Crypto Creeks is is literally a, a novel I wrote during my MA. So right. I never got to finish it. So like now I can I can transfer all these um, these really lovely ideas I had as a as a wannabe novelist into games. So Crypto Creek, uh, sorry, Crypto Creeks mm-hmm. uh, sounds very cryptic tech but uh so what is the uh sort of the underlying theme of cryptid creeks well you, you play you play scouts like river scouts and you're trying to lift a curse that's kind of befallen your town uh and the only way you can lift it is by waking up slumbering cryptids which are these giant ancient creatures mm-hmm. in your they're said to like protect your your sort of the creek or your hometown in, in its greatest in hours of greatest need so um yeah, that's kind of the theme behind it. So you've got to like pass these trials called the Keeper Trials. Uh, and if you do, you, you eventually wake up this cryptid. Uh, but it's not going to be easy. So that's the idea that these trials are quite quite difficult to uh, to get through. Oh, I, uh, are there any sort of touchstones of, of sort of uh, general media that, that we could sort of use to sort of bounce this this idea off of and, and help inspire our, our gaming group? Um yeah so like so i love all these things that it's inspired by so it's like the the goonies uh gravity falls like lumberjanes is a graphic novel series Mm. um we've got uh goosebumps we've got um hilda uh all the work from hilda the books the comic uh, the comics and the uh, series and then we've got um randomly pan's labyrinth (laughs) nice Another thing I absolutely love, and uh, and that's directly the trials are directly taken from Ophelia's kind of trials within that film and that book. Um, okay. Yeah, so uh, but that's the only kind of very very adult <laughs> uh, influence. So Cryptic Creeks is more uh, well, all your games are, are very educational and and family orientated, and Cryptic Cryptic Creeks is no different than I take it. Yeah, it's definitely going to have a family-friendly uh, vibe. Um, it will slightly change in tone because the the GM or the navigator is going to be able to uh, make up the curse and, and, mm-hmm. and whether they, they go for something that's quite lighthearted and kind of like quirky or whether they go for something that's actually very dark in tone and quite uh, difficult mm-hmm. um, is up to them. So the tone will shift depending on who runs the game. Okay. Uh, and I quite like the idea of that because you know it can go anything from like very young kids can play it to all the way up to like you know adults, obviously. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely, and uh, and that is that the one that uses the Power by the Apocalypse system with the, the playbooks. Yeah, yeah. So that it uses the playbooks, it uses the moves. So the the playbooks are going to be called scout books, and the moves going to be called badges. And they're represented by like scouting badges, obviously. And you you can sort of the players can have these tokens as they go through the game uh it's got lots of unique mechanics like we're we're, we're sort of doubling down on the kind of sailing mechanics on the river mm. and you can upgrade your boat uh <laughs> with supernatural enhancements from these cryptids um can you can spend like tokens and xp to like kind of give it like a i don't know a love crafty and outboard motor or something or that like, you can go with super speed across the water no i i love it i i uh sort of slight insight into my youth but i was cub scout and scouts and and did all that sort of thing so sort of hearing that really rings some some sort of good memories um so it's definitely something that, that i'd be interested in playing possibly on the more light-hearted end but yeah. you know as you say it's got that um variable that sliding scale of of um content and and uh usability for a, a wider audience yeah um, I think that's kind of the beauty of fa- of all ages. I mean, I quite like the term "all ages" games. Mm. Uh, family friendly is a, is a good term as well, but "all ages" is is what I'm kind of focused on at the moment because it means that, like you say, you can have that long, large scale. Because uh, some games, the kids can't literally can't play it because it's mm. either too complex to learn or the content's too adult. Yeah. So if you can go from very young children all the way up to uh, to uh, 
you know, like mature adults, then I think you're on to a bit of a winner. Absolutely. Uh, sticking with this sort of all ages and maybe more family orientated stuff uh, on your website, it um, you've got a link to uh, Tattered Bear. So what's that initiative if, if someone's not familiar with it and, and what has it been like getting involved in Tattered Bear? Yeah, so myself and some colleagues, so Scriv the Bard, Steph Campbell from TTRPG Kids and Josh mm. Arklin from Art of Arklin, uh, we formed this uh, publishing company for all ages uh, designers to kind of have and support their project, bring their projects to life, basically. Uh, we've kept all the costs very low and we have like an a la carte kind of system where you have a consultation with us and then uh, we go through how we can support you and how we can help you. It could be, it could be with marketing, it could be promotions, it could be with uh, crowdfunding set up. It could be with some elements of production or it could simply be consultancy. So you can have any subject you want because we've got quite a vast amount of experience between us uh, within the industry uh, mm -hmm. and it's only growing. And uh, we've welcomed like three clients now to date already and we've only launched a couple of months ago. Wow. And we're building every every week. It's been it's been fantastic. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, you mentioned there's some some uh, some more f uh, fantastic uh, game designers and content creators and, and things like that. So it, I will make sure that there is a link to Tata Bear and and them um, down in the description below. So please scroll down and follow these links and support these fantastic content creators. Hatchlings games uh especially um because we've spoken about so inspire isles overalls dragon dowser cryptic creeks there as well you know you've got a, a lot going on and more coming in the future as well so uh it's kind of a watch this space kind of situation um what's really sort of sat on the, the we'll say the near horizon um, how how best to put this the crocodile nearest the boat is uh <laughs> dragon dowser then we've got cryptic creeks and then what's what's on the horizon but very much sort of um coming into being yeah so so in the new year 2024 we'll have uh a, i think we're going to be part of zine quest i've got a game plan called festivals at the end of the world which is going to be about communities um constructing festivals to honor like these guardian spirits uh, and again, it will use the deck of cards and the suits represent different elements of festivals. I'm really excited about that. That's very early stages, but it should have a quick turnaround, I think. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the sort of March, April time, we've got a, a big game coming out called Argo Nought. Um, and that's basically a, a retelling of, of Jason the Argonauts myth uh, with in space as a space opera. Mm -hmm. Um, so instead of the golden fleece, you've got like a golden moon and you've got to kind of travel across in your ship with your crew and, uh, land on all these different asteroids and kind of like, for, you know, like take on the, the encounters there. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. It's, it's mate, it, I'm doing it with, uh, Kat for Law Mistress and mm -hmm. Alex Connolly's the artist, amazing, like mecha artist and like, mm -hmm. uh, character artist. Uh, it's, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, no, I love the way that sounds already. I, I have to have to be honest and, and sort of, uh, again, going onto the Discord server, Discord community uh, that you have for, for Hatchlings games, um, a couple of snapshots of the artwork for, for each of the games we've mentioned. Uh, you know, great insights, exciting stuff, a nice, uh, what was the recent one? Uh, Ulysses 31 was, was, <laughs> yeah. was put up as a, the intro i remember that show uh, i love that clearly, i love that guys, show so much it was awesome you know it just it just helps build the picture and, and is so inspirational and and helps build my own personal excitement for, for games like argonaut uh coming out in the future um so with all of these sort of different games in in their various stages of, of production uh in Sprawls and, and overalls being sort of out there and released dragon dowser uh, being at the very end of its Kickstarter run, so please go and support that if you can. Um, I'm, I know which you would greatly appreciate all the support you can get for these games. Uh, and moving through into sort of Cryptic Creeks and, and beyond, do you get much time between these projects, or, or is there just this sort of constant churn because there's conventions and, and all these other commitments as well? Do you get much of a break between them? 
Not really, but like, if I'm honest with you, like, I love it. <laughs> I love doing this. It's, it's so much fun. Like, uh, I get plenty of, because it's our full time job and it's my wife's mm. full time job. We are hatchlings. Uh, Catherine writes for all our games, does all the writing, does all the admin. It's, uh, it's not as pressurized as it used to be. Um, uh, it's enabling me to get on with the kind of the themes, the ideas, uh, start the design, work with other amazing creators. Mm. and visit all these cons uh eventually we're definitely going to have to expand a bit because there's no way we can cope with all these game releases especially at conventions mm. because we're going to need some someone to volunteer with us or hire someone <laughs> um and thankfully we've got we've built up a lovely community around us who are willing to to help out and to and to even you know it's it's good to for them to some people to learn as well if they want to be a future exhibitor then it's great to be on the stand for like a convention, sort of dragon meet or something, or the expo. Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so I do get some time, yeah, and it's becoming more easier and easier as I go along because I'm learning the systems behind fulfillment, printing, uh, and distribution, and those are the things that take a lot of time. And I'm possibly going to get a marketer or promotional uh, element there, so that will take up <laughs> about eighty percent of my pressure away because oh, nice. it's nice. such a huge part of uh, being a publisher. I mean, yeah. I mean, you 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 basically answered what was going to be my next question, which was from from starting with in Inspirals uh, to where we are now. Uh, what would have been some of the biggest lessons you've learnt, both as a creator and as a marketing machine? That that I guess you have to be with respect to to putting these games out there. Yeah, I think I think I think the biggest lesson is is to support others. Actually, if I'm honest with you. I think mm. if you don't do that, if you if you just keep taking and taking, uh, then you're going to hit a ceiling. I think. I think it's because I've reached out with good faith to a lot of people, and I've supported people with no, uh, you know, uh, want of like a transactional kind of arrangement. Uh, it's been it's been to our favour, really. I think mm. in some ways. Uh, I think if you build that way, it's lovely. If you have organically build a community. Uh, don't force anything and don't uh you know don't make it one sided <laughs> no, no, great advice uh, absolutely so if we wanted to go and see uh go onto the internet shall we say and either see hear or just experience uh gameplay of uh Inspirals or uh dragon dows or anything like that where can we go and find some of this some of this great content so we can sort of continue to be inspired or um, inspired for our own games or inspired to recommend to others or just to come and maybe pick up the game uh, for ourselves? Well, the Girls Run These Worlds, uh, I just did a, a series on Inspirals, which was amazing. Mm. Uh, they had like actual sign language up on the overlay so that you could the, uh, the audience could learn the alphabet while they're, while they're playing through the game. That was brilliant. Mm. Um, and they're thinking of doing a second season with overalls, hopefully. Amazing. And then uh, we're t I'm going to talk to them about um, Crypto Creeks, and hopefully there'll be a, a thing there. So there'll be an actual play just before we launch the Kickstarter. Mm. And we're going to do a podcast with Crypto Creeks as well, like the first oh. podcast uh, series, because uh, it seems to fit that kind of theme. You know, there's kind of like serialized, kind of spooky, yeah. goosebumps type <laughs> audio dramas. Is so, is that yeah. going to be like an in house podcast, or, or are you. No, I'm working with some cool people. Amazing. I won't. Uh, I won't reveal anything more, but uh, of course, of course. <laughs> that's in the pipeline. Mm. No, I'm excited. I, I, you know, as a as a podcaster and someone who enjoys podcasts, um, I will definitely keep an ear out for that. Depending on which medium you choose to sort of distribute that that as a as an actual player's or an audio drama. Um, and again, if uh, if I can find it later on in the future, I will make sure there are links down to it in the description via your website or uh, whichever platform it's, it's being sort of hosted on in that respect. Nice so, thank you. You know, absolutely. Well, thank you. You know, you make these games. I just ask you about them and, <laughs> and, and, and learn and get inspired by them. So uh, really my thanks goes out to you on, on several different levels. Um, we have, you know, we, we've covered a little bit about yourself, uh, Inspire Isles, Overalls, Dragon Dowser, please go and support that on Kickstarter in the next couple of days. Um, touched on Cryptic Creeks and sort of moving on to the future. Is there anything else you want to discuss uh, at this point? 
Rich? No, I think there's a lot, to, lot, lot covered there. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we've got the final Isles game under Isles in the next next year's summer, mm. uh, and then we've got a really exciting project um, later next year, uh, which I can't talk much about, but um, it's going to lean into um, performance and uh, like one shot mm. uh, actual plays. So it's going to be very like it's going to push actors and performers to the to the brink <laughs> well i will definitely ask you to come back and tell me about that because that is too good of a um, tease should we yep. say to, to turn down <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, if you'd be willing to come back and join me again, uh, Rich, and you know, I always appreciate yours and, and other creators' times for coming to coming on to chat with me, of course. Of course, yeah, absolutely. So, just so we can make sure people can uh, come and support you on social media, come and support you on the internet, come and support you in the various places you are, including cons and things like that. Rich, where can we find you and everything you're associated with, please? Um, Hatchling DM, most places. We've got presence on. Um, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and our website is a really good place to uh, keep up to date with all our content. Uh, if people could subscribe through the homepage, that would be amazing because having uh, email sort of uh, subscribers is, is the perfect way to keep in touch, really. Mm. And we have a newsletter every two weeks that we send out. So, um, yeah, so just go to www.hatchlingsgames.co.uk and subscribe on the homepage. All right. Well, I will make sure there are links down in the description below this podcast. So please scroll down, follow those links, support uh, not only Hatchlings Games, but the the content creators and game designers associated. We mentioned there, uh, Tata Bear and, and the, the great team you've, you've got there. Um, so please, uh, where you can, uh, follow those links and support these amazing people in the TTRPG community. Rich, it has been such a pleasure to get to catch up with you again uh, and learn about your your current games, your coming games, and your future games as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. I will look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about the show, then go to www.snydersreturn.squarespace.com. Alternatively, you can find us over on Twitter, at Return Snyder. We have a link tree link in the description of this episode and if you want to support us come and join us over on patreon and we also have a discord server uh, please leave us a review because we'd love to learn how to improve the channel and provide better content out for for those who are listening uh, until we uh, until we speak again thank you